even though the mother has anti-B antibodies from the bacteria in the gut, those antibodies are... Welcome to Tala Talks NICU. Today we are going over part three in our series of jaundice. So go back and watch video one and video two. And in the meantime, remember to like and subscribe and answer multiple choice questions. Today's video is on immune hemolysis and how that causes hyperbilirubinemia. I think a lot of people have issues with kind of understanding this and understanding why we care so much about certain of mummy's blood types. So after this video, you're gonna get it. You're going to realize why some of mummy's blood types are more concerning than others. So today, let's start by talking about RH disease or rhesus disease, which as you all know, can be very concerning for the baby to end up with anemia as well as hyperbilirubinemia. So RH disease happens when the mummy, so this is the mother, and this is the placenta here that I'm drawing, when the mother's red blood cells don't have the D antigen. An antigen is just kind of any protein that's sticking on a red blood cell. We all have completely different antigens on different cells of our bodies. A lot of them are inherited. So the D antigen is one of the many antigens that decides whether somebody is RH negative or RH positive. So for the time being, let's just assume that this mummy is RH negative is D negative. So here we have an RH negative mummy. So say we have a baby that for whatever reason was RH positive. And we know that we're RH positive because we have D antigen, that's a D by the way, sitting on the red blood cell. So in this case, the baby, this baby probably uh, inherited the D antigen from daddy. So in this case, daddy is probably D positive and so the babies ended up being D positive too. So there's a tear and some of the baby's red blood cells end up in the mother's circulation. So now the mother is exposed to a foreign antigen in its blood supply. So what is the mother going to do? As soon as these red blood cells come into the mother's circulation, then the mother's immune system is going to make antibodies against those red blood cells. So if the mother makes enough of those antibodies, so we have a whole bunch of these antibodies against the D antigen, then those antibodies cross over into the placenta and then go to the baby's blood. And what are they gonna do? They will set up a whole cascade to break down those red blood cells. So you end up with an immune, because it's an antibody mediated, hemolysis of those red blood cells. So RH disease happens in mothers that are negative. So you could be O negative, B negative, AB negative, A negative. If you are negative, then the mother is at increased risk of making antibodies against her baby's red blood cells. Also, in RH disease, it generally does not happen in the first pregnancy because the mother has to have had exposure to the red blood cells and enough time to make those antibodies that can then go back to the baby. So generally, unless something very severe has happened during that pregnancy, generally uh, RH disease will happen in the second, third and pregnancies onwards. Just because most of the mixing between fetal and maternal blood generally happens at the time of delivery. Remember though, there are caveats to this. There are sometimes that uh, mummies are pregnant without even knowing about it. And there's also the possibility that you do have some sort of severe mixing early on in one of the pregnancies. But essentially, RH disease is when the mummy is negative and the baby is positive because the baby inherited it from daddy and the mother has made antibodies that have then crossed the placenta and are destroying the red blood cells. Now let's talk about ABO incompatibility and how that causes immune hemolysis. There's something slightly different about the ABO incompatibility as opposed to the RH disease. Remember, mummy will only have made anti-D or the antibodies to a baby with a negative rhesus factor if the mother was exposed to the fetal blood, whether it was a previous pregnancy or a really bad issue during that pregnancy. ABO is different from that. And the reason why is that 
we all have bacteria in our gut that have very similar antigens to the antigens that are displayed on red blood cells. So the bacteria in our gut have little antigens on them that look just like the B antigen of B type blood cells. They have antigens just like the A um, antigens on the A type blood cells. So what that means is even if you've never had a baby, even if you've never had a blood transfusion, if you are a certain blood type, innately you will have the antibodies to the other blood types that you don't have. So for example, if you're O, and I am O, if I'm O, then because of the bacteria in my gut, naturally in my body, I have anti-B and anti-A antibodies at all times. So logically, if you are an O mother, then you don't need a previous pregnancy or some sort of tr tragic thing to happen with mixing of fetal and maternal blood to be exposed to those antigens. As an O mommy, I already have the anti-A and the anti-B. So as an O mommy, so you can see my uh, red blood cells here, there isn't a single antigen on it, right? They just, they don't have an A or a B antigen or an AB, which is what the blood type AB would be. But I do have anti-A and I have, I always draw it like this, even though obviously they don't look like that. I have anti-A and I have anti-B antibodies. Now, the other very interesting fact about the ABO incompatibility is that O mummies naturally produce antibodies of the IgG type. So the antibodies that O mothers produce, the anti-A and the anti-B antibodies, are of the IgG type. IgG antibodies are capable of crossing the placenta. What's interesting is if you are an A mummy, so say you've got a little A on your antigens, so what type of antibodies would you produce if you're an A mummy? You would produce the anti-B antibodies. Those antibodies that A mummies produce are IgM antibodies. So IgM antibodies do not cross the placenta. So why do we care about this? We care about it because if you have an A mommy and a B baby, so say baby inherited the B type uh, antigen from daddy, even though the mother has anti-B antibodies from the bacteria in the gut, those antibodies are not going to cross the placenta and cause hemolysis. They're stuck on the same side of the mummy. Same thing if the mummy was B and it was A. The only time we care about it is when the mummy is O. So when the mummy is O and doesn't have any antigens, then she has formed antibodies of A and B that can cross the placenta. So in an O mummy, say the baby ends up being B, those B antibodies can cross the placenta, go into the fetus's bloodstream, attach to the antigen on the red blood cell in the baby, and then set off a chain reaction that causes it to hemolyze, so causes that red blood cell to break down. So we worry about ABO incompatibility when the mummy is O. Remember that. When the mummy is O, we worry about ABO incompatibility. When the mummy is B or A or AB, then the antibodies that she has made, if she's made any, do not cross the placenta. So we do not have to worry about hemolysis. So the blood types that we would worry about most that the mother had would be the O blood type as well as any negative blood type. So whether that's A, A, B, B, O. Those are the ones that if you see that in the mother and you see a high bilirubin level, you start thinking, am I missing a hemolytic process going on here, an immune hemolysis? So the other thing that you should also know is that this can actually start um, during pregnancy with the antibodies going over into the fetus bloodstream. But those antibodies, even after the baby is born, can stick around for weeks. In fact, antibodies from mommy can stay around for till about six months of age. The peak issue with the high antibodies still breaking down the red blood cells is kind of within the first week or so of life. After that, even if there is continued hemolysis, it occurs at a much lower rate. 
but it's that first week of life, if there are a lot of maternal antibodies that are causing hemolysis, that you really have to be worried about the bilirubin. So I hope that you kind of understood that process. Again, remember, you worry about mummies when they're O or they're negative. So thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Go answer the multiple choice questions. And we just want to thank you for being here. Thank you.